The chairman of the Joint Chiefs has told Congress that this will likely last years, this war. A protracted war is going to last years, according to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Will today's new commitment of javelins, anti-tank weapons to Ukraine, shorten that timeline? Andrew, we want to see this come to an end as quickly as possible. And that's exactly why we're making sure that we're doing everything we can to support Ukraine and to give them the assistance that they need to put pressure and to increase pressure on Russia, even as we're strengthening uh, our, our, the defenses of our NATO alliance. So what about the javelins? So the javelins, uh, we just uh, did. The president authorized another $100 million in a drawdown that will provide more javelins to, uh, to our Ukrainian partners. Put this in perspective. Between the United States and uh, other allies and partners, for every Russian tank in Ukraine, we have provided or will soon provide 10 anti-tank systems, 10 for every single Russian tank. So in terms of what they need to act quickly and act effectively, to deal with the planes that are um, uh, firing at them from the skies, the tanks that are trying to destroy uh, their cities from the ground, they have the tools that they need. They're going to keep getting them, and we're going to keep sustaining that. But to the chairman's point, and the president said this as well, as much as we want to see this come to an end as soon as possible to stop the death and destruction that's being wrought by Russia and Ukraine, there is also a very uh, likely scenario by which this goes on for some time. Uh, the Russians, even as they're moving their forces, they've retreated from Kyiv. They've retreated from the, uh, the north and the west. Uh, they're consolidating forces in the east, uh, in the Donbass. They have a lot of force uh, still left. The Ukrainians have something else that's ultimately stronger. And that is a fierce determination and will uh, to defend their country with the support uh, of many countries around the world. Can they win? So ultimately, yes, because what is, what is, uh, what is success? What is victory? It's holding on to the sovereignty and independence of their country. And there is no scenario by which over time uh, that will not happen. Um, the problem is it may take time. And in the meantime, tremendous death and destruction. But what is uh, so powerful here is that uh, the Ukrainians have made it very clear that they will not subjugate themselves to Vladimir Putin's will. But no matter how much we give them, how can Ukraine ever last against Russia for the long term unless the U.S. and other countries guarantee its borders, its safety, as President Zelensky wants? Well, first things first. The first thing is to see that this aggression by Russia comes to an end, uh, that there is a, a ceasefire, that Russia withdraws its forces, uh, that Ukraine um, asserts its sovereignty and its independence. But then, yes, we have to do things to make sure that, to the best of our ability and Ukraine's ability, this can't happen again, that Russia is deterred, uh, that Ukraine is defended. We're having constant conversations. Will we guarantee that? So we're Will having, the U.S. get more we're involved? Having, constant conversations with our Ukrainian partners, pretty much on a daily basis, including about uh, what it is we and others could do in the event of a successful negotiation uh, to uh, defend them and help them defend themselves going forward. All of this is the subject of conversations right now. I'm not going to get ahead of that, but we're going to do everything we can. Others will do what they can to make sure that uh, a Ukraine can defend itself and deter aggression being repeated by Russia. President Putin has said he wants to recreate the Soviet Union, the glory of the Soviet Union. With those ambitions, how can Ukraine ever be safe as long as Putin's in power? Well, two things. First, in terms of what Russia set out to do, what Putin set out to do in Ukraine, this has already been a strategic setback, uh, if, if not a failure. Because keep in mind, Andrea, the, the goal that, uh, that Putin set, in his own words, was to eliminate Ukraine's sovereignty and independence. He sees it as uh, a state that doesn't deserve to be independent, that needs to be subsumed back into some kind of greater Russia. That is not happening. Uh, not just the retreat from Kyiv, but the fact that no matter how you play this out, the Ukrainians are not going to subject themselves to, uh, uh, to a Russian uh, dictatorship. He's more popular than ever at home. So he may be, for now, more popular. Of course, if you were getting fed a steady diet, morning, noon, and night of propaganda, which unfortunately the Russian people are, that speaks to uh, what popularity he has. At the same time, uh, when people are responding to polls, they may be very much afraid of giving uh, a truthful answer. There's now a 15-year uh, criminal penalty for anyone who in any way opposes the so-called special military operation. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. Having said that, I think 
there is a real fundamental problem, which is the Russians don't get uh, the factual information that they need to make judgments for themselves. And that's because of a system that Vladimir Putin has uh, perfected in which that information is denied them. President Biden has called Putin a butcher, a war criminal. You have said that the people responsible for the crimes in Bucha and those who ordered them will be held accountable. That's right. How can that happen without Vladimir Putin standing trial? First, Andrea, the, uh, the wheels of accountability can move slowly, but they move. And someday, some way, somewhere, uh, those who committed these crimes and those who ordered the crimes uh, will be held accountable. But it takes time. And part of this is building the case. Part of this is which we're doing uh, and others are doing. Part of, uh, there's a, uh, a Ukrainian uh, special prosecutor uh, who is uh, working on this. We're supporting her efforts. We set up uh, at the uh, United Nations at the Human Rights Council uh, a commission of inquiry that's looking into this as well. We're supporting those efforts, building the, uh, building the case, getting the evidence, documenting it. Uh, the International Criminal Court is looking at this too. But all of this will play out over time. And we have, to, we have to build the case. We have to get the evidence. We have to document it. We're doing all of that. So is that next month, next year, in five years? It, 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 it could take time, but I think I can guarantee you there will be a relentless effort to make sure that those responsible for what we're seeing uh, are held accountable. And what we're seeing, Andrea, is, I think, beyond uh, what any of us even um, could, could fully anticipate. We said before Russia committed this aggression that there would be atrocities, that it was a deliberate part of their campaign. And even knowing that, when this Russian tide receded from Bucha and we saw the death and destruction left in its wake, and we saw what that looked like, including people who had been assassinated, in effect, their hands tied behind, executed, their hands tied behind their backs, uh, the abuse committed against uh, women, uh, against children, it's horrific, and there has to be accountability for it. Did you see the video that President Zelensky provided to the United Nations or other images from Bucha? Mm -hmm. uh, as you describe it, the atrocities, you have small children. Mm -hmm. What do you tell your children? What would you tell them? Well, thankfully, they're, they're too small to actually see that, be able to digest it. And, but someday and they'll, they but will some, know. But someday they will. And I have to tell you, Andrea, I think, and I, I suspect most of us had the same reaction, especially those of us who have children or even small children. You put yourself in the shoes of the, the father, the mother, the grandfather, the grandmother, who's in the middle of this, who is suffering this, whose kids' lives uh, are at stake or in jeopardy, or who've been lost. Um, and it, go, it, it hits you, I said the other day, seeing these images from Bucha was like uh, a, a punch to the gut. It takes the, it takes the wind out of you. Y you can know something in, intellectually, but then when you see these images uh, and you translate that into your own life, when you ask yourself, what if this was happening in my town, to my kids, to my family? I think it only reinforces our determination to do everything we can to support the Ukrainians, to put pressure on Russia, to bring this to an end as quickly as possible. Your UN ambassador, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, described these atrocities and compared it uh, by extension mm -hmm. to the Holocaust. Talked about what the Council of Mariupol have mm -hmm. described, mm -hmm. people forcibly, tens of thousands, taken from their homes, taken to Russia and put in camps. Isn't that the very definition of genocide? Well, we have to get all of the uh, information, all of the evidence. We have to, as I said, document everything that's happened, fully, fully understand what's happened. It's, a, it's an interesting irony, in a sense. This is, in, in some ways, the most documented war in real time that we've experienced because of technology, because of, of, of smartphones, because of the incredible courage of reporters uh, who remained in Ukraine. But even so, there are things that we're not seeing in real time, including Bucha. And it's only when that tide recedes that you see what's actually happened. So I think we're going to learn a lot more in the days and weeks ahead. I'm afraid that what we're going to learn is um, even more horrifying. Do we know anything about what's happening in these Russian camps with Ukrainians? And do we have any hope of getting them back? We, we, we don't have good information on that. But certainly, we're doing everything we can. Other countries are doing everything they can. Uh, to make sure that uh, anyone who's being detained is released.